This is your five tech things you should know about episode number 63 for November 5th, 2010, brought to you by mosey.com. Hey everybody, Jeffrey Powers here. Welcome to the five tech things you should know about for all you weekend warriors in tech that just need to be in the know but don't want too much overload. Let's get into your five tech things you should know. All right, this week Mark Zuckerberg talked about places, which is not really new in Facebook, but has been expanded so merchants can get in on the action, and it's pretty cool. Now, places is like Foursquare. You've probably heard about Foursquare. We've talked about it before, for sure. It's basically you pull out your mobile phone and you say, hey, I'm at the pick and save, or whatever it is, and you're getting carrots or something like that. Uh, Places does the same thing, except now it's in Facebook. So now when you are at, like for instance this morning, I was at breakfast with my brother and I decided to try Places. Pulled out the iPhone, I said, hey, I'm at breakfast with my brother. My sister then commented back saying, hey, that's good that you have breakfast. And I'm thinking to myself, I have enough breakfast to keep me tied over for a long while. So that's not a big deal. But it keeps people connected. There's so many times that I've been in Foursquare and realized somebody else was in a location that I was in, and then I went to seek him out to try and find him because I needed to talk to him, get some money, whatever you needed to do. So it's a great way to find people and where they are and and go there. So Places is going to do the same thing. Now, I'm not totally sold on Places, even though you can get discounts and cool stuff for checking in and going to different places in Facebook. So I'm going to keep an eye on that. However... I'm still a fan for of Foursquare, not because I can become a mayor, not because I can get a badge for something, because I don't need no stinking badges, but there is a little bit of separation. I don't want people to know where I am, but I still want to check in. reason why I want to check in is kind of get an idea of where I'm going and what I'm doing in a given month, and then reevaluate as as time goes on. It's actually pretty cool because then I can say, well, when was I last in Las Vegas? Well, that was about three weeks ago because that's what Foursquare said. Pretty cool stuff. Um, I like to be in it. Not everybody wants to be in the cloud that way, and that's totally understandable. Whether you use Places or Foursquare, it's really up to you. Which one do you use? You can let me know over at geekazine at gmail.com. T-Mobile came out and said, hey, we don't need no stinking 4G. We've got HSPA, High Speed packet access if you really want to know the, the term basically it's their the way that they're doing their data plans and they say hey it's just as fast as 4g and there's a lot of people that are saying you know we've done some speed tests and so far so good that's pretty cool but you know I, i'm not exactly sold on the fact that hspa is 4g they it's fast don't get me wrong but they can they just need to call it something else they can't they shouldn't be calling it 4g because it really isn't 4G isn't really what it is anymore. You either have WiMAX or LTE. So this would become another standard in 4G worlds. I guess you'd have WiMAX, LTE, and HSPA. Now, the thing about HSPA, and one thing you got to understand is there's different versions of HSPA, um, including uh, download HSPA and then upload HSPA, and then you have HSPA+, Plus, which is the enhanced. And this is what we're talking about where the 4G speeds will lie. So if your phone doesn't do HSPA Plus and you're on T-Mobile, it really doesn't matter anyway. But if you got something that actually can handle something with HSPA Plus, you should be able to get that fast, near fast 4G speed, which is pretty cool. Will it change me over to T-Mobile? No, probably not just yet. But it's actually pretty cool to know that I can get a data plan with fast rates. Google sues and then Google is sued and suing and everybody's suing everybody that's in Google. They should probably put out a, a, a little flowchart just like they did who's suing who, who Google is suing and who's suing Google. Anyway, Google is suing the government because apparently there was a contract where Microsoft got the contract, but Google didn't get an option to uh, to get into that contract. Therefore, Google says, hey, that's kind of not fair, government, U.S. government. We want our piece of the pie, too, and we we want you to do something about it. So they're suing the United States. However, the United Kingdom is suing Google for all the privacy on the streetcar thing, where basically when they pass by your house, they, they checked more than just 
the street and the address and the pictures around. Uh, the example was the Wi-Fi signals. They were, and they said that they weren't doing it intentionally, but they were checking to see if there you had an open Wi-Fi and what it was and, and how to get it. So they weren't publicly announcing it and giving it out there, but there were still a lot of privacy concerns. I have a feeling that Google streetcars from now on, we're gonna have to go through a whole privacy statement uh, policies that are that are approved by the government, approved by Google, before those cars can even hit the streets in any country, any road, anywhere. So, and of course, if you have a neighborhood that says eh, we don't want as a neighborhood to have you up on Street View, they'll knock it off just as easily as that. So Google is getting sued, but suing. I want to see this flow chart. Chart. Can somebody please make me a flow chart? <laughs> Speaking of laptops and tablets and desktops, you want to back all your data up now and we're going to give you a code GEEK and now 15% off that already low price until the end of the year. Use that code GEEK to back up now, back up often, back up offsite. $4.95 a month per computer for Mosey Home Unlimited to back up your pictures and your documents and everything you need. So if you have a fire or theft or snow or anything like that gets into your computer, you are not out of luck. Back up now, back up often, back up off-site, top-level security, and you can even back up on-site and off-site with mosey.com. Remember that code GEEK at checkout. GEEK gets you 15% off. All right, Dell has announced that they're getting into the tablet market. In fact, they kind of, I think they already had some tablets out there. They acquired a company called Boomi, which is a software solutions company. Uh, they're going to be taking that company and focusing it towards tablets. Michael Dell has outlined, hey, we're going to be in tablets. We're going to do it. We're, gonna, we're not going to mess around like we did with the smartphones. If you don't remember what happened, about a year ago, Michael Dell was on a website called Giga Ohm, Ohm Malik. Uh, he interviewed Michael Dell and, and where he basically asked, are you going to have smartphones? And Michael Dell pretty much said, you know, I don't think we're going to get it in the smartphone market. And then they turned around and they got a smartphone in Japan. Whether it hits the United States, probably not, but yeah, it's a, they are out there, is the bottom line. Well, Dell is not doing the same thing with tablets. They want to go headstrong. In fact, I thought I just saw a commercial the other night for a Dell tablet. Two people running around town trying to find each other for a first date to try and find true love or something like that. Pretty cool commercial, pretty cool tablet. 7-inch tablet, of course they'll have probably different sizes. Uh, we've heard Steve Jobs rant about 7-inch uh, tablets. I'm all for those 7-inch tablets. I can put it in my pocket. It, they're small, they're compact, and they're going to be a lot more powerful than that iPad tablet that you might already have. It can also work two thumbs for typing as opposed to fingers for typing. I kind of like that option too. We'll see what happens with Dell. They'll definitely bring it up a notch in our tablet market. And within quarter two of next year, you'll probably be owning a tablet yourself. It's just the way things are going. Goodbye, laptop. Well, maybe. We'll see what happens. All right, let's talk a little bit about our Unix Linux friends over there. And, of course, Ubuntu, which is one of the popular Linux flavors, has come out with a new version of Ubuntu where they ditched GNOME or GNOME or whatever you want to call it, G-N-O-M-E, GNOME is basically a interface, uh, so you can have a graphical user interface, so you can have your little start button, you have your programs, you can get to your programs without having to type in everything. Otherwise, you'd have just DOS-looking screens where you'd have to remember all the commands, uh, how to open, how to close, how to go from there. Well, they found that GNOME really didn't work too well with touch screens, they didn't work too well in, in certain areas, so Ubuntu decided to switch it off to Unity. Doesn't mean you couldn't use GNOME and switch it over. All you had, to, all you basically had to do is say, "Hey, I don't want Unity. I want GNOME, and everything's okay." But the base load comes with Unity, which is well and good. Other companies are still embracing GNOME, so it's not going to go away anytime soon. And maybe it'll be even be updated so it becomes the major flavor of user interface for the uh, operating system. 
of course, you probably haven't, a lot of you probably haven't really delved into the Linux area of things. It's getting a lot better, but there's still a lot of confusion out there on what to use and how to use it, and how to program, and there's still a lot of confusing steps to programming things like wireless cards and stuff like that. It's absolutely free, so if you have an older computer, definitely put on a newer version of Ubuntu and see if it actually works for you, or if it's Windows 7 or Mac is still the thing for you. And that is the five tech things you should know about. My name is Jeffrey Powers. If you have any questions, 608-205-4378 is the phone number. Geekazine at gmail.com is the email address. And, of course, you can also go up to geekazine.com and get into the show notes, get to the RSS feeds, so you can download it on your iTunes, your iPod, your whatever, through Tech Podcast. And, of course, you can go to techpodcast.tv to get this stuff and all the videos over on techpodcast.com. For the five tech things you should know about, my name is Jeffrey Powers. Thanks a lot for watching and listening, and we will see you next week on the five tech things you should know about. Take care.